Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Please be seated. A little disclaimer before I begin uh, this morning. I want everyone to know that uh, no part of this sermon was produced with artificial intelligence. <laughs> and it's up to you to decide if any of it was produced with any intelligence at all. <laughs> In last week's gospel, Jesus had an encounter with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Nicodemus came to Jesus looking for something more, something deeper than what our material world has to offer. He and Jesus had a conversation about life in the spirit. I suggest that it is really rather remarkable that these two men from very different worlds were able to converse and go deeper meeting each other on the spiritual level. It was a remarkable, positive interaction. In today's gospel, Jesus has another encounter with some Pharisees, and this one is not quite so positive. It is a Sabbath day, and the fourth commandment says, Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. You shall not do any work. Jesus' disciples were pulling some of the heads of the grain to eat. And the Pharisees notice and protest, harvesting on the Sabbath. But is pulling a few heads of grain really harvesting? Jesus responds to their criticism by pointing out how David and his friends ate the holy bread in the temple, bread that was reserved for the priests. Jesus is arguing that there can be exceptions. And then becoming frustrated, Jesus says, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Compassion towards one's neighbor is more important than some kind of rigid adherence to the law. And then Jesus has the audacity to heal a man's withered hand. Again, not allowed on the Sabbath. One is not permitted to do a good deed on the Sabbath? better to let the man continue to suffer? It makes Jesus angry and sad, their hardness of heart. How quick they are to judge and condemn. How they place their own self-righteousness above the needs of people around them. Jesus' interactions with the Pharisees this week didn't go nearly as well as his conversation with Nicodemus last week. The Pharisees had made the law a god, placed the law above people, completely missing the point and the purpose. These Pharisees were using the law as a weapon to accuse and condemn to bind up heavy loads and place them on other people's shoulders and to highlight their superiority and self-righteousness. But Jesus can see their hearts. He can see how hard their hearts are. He can see that these Pharisees have completely missed the point of what the Sabbath is supposed to be about. It's not about scrupulosity and pointing out other people's perceived shortcomings. The Sabbath is about freedom, possibilities, and renewal. Sabbath rest, rooted in God's resting on the seventh day after creating the universe, is a practice meant to draw us closer to God 
closer to each other, closer to ourselves, closer to creation. Sabbath is a practice, not a set of rules and regulations. Practicing Sabbath can help us disengage from the worries of the everyday, our regrets about the past, our concerns about the future. Disengage from the constant and sometimes overwhelming noise and busyness of the world around us and give us a chance to refocus, reconnect, re-engage with the love of God in the people and in the world around us. Rabbi Naomi Levy describes the Sabbath as the soul of the week. And she writes, Some think of the Sabbath as a day of prohibitions. You can't do this and you can't do that. But the Sabbath is actually a day of permission a day when we give our souls permission to dream again. Isn't that nice? How long can we keep racing around, spreading ourselves so thin, contorted by stress and worry? There's so much within our grasp that we keep missing. Imagine what it might feel like to stop spending money to stop looking to the outside world as a source of entertainment and distraction. A day of rest gives us the opportunity to find true relaxation from within. How would our lives change if for one day each week we were to leave the world of materialism and technology and enter into the world of spirituality nature, and beauty. Picture a day that we spend not by fretting about the past or worrying about the future, but by living in the sacred present. A day in which we can be still, still enough to actually hear the things we so often miss, the silent yearning of our souls, which we usually deny or ignore. A day to be still enough to hear what it is that the people in our lives are really trying to say to us. Still enough to appreciate all the gifts and blessings that we take for granted each day. Still enough to feel God's presence in our lives. Imagine what it might be like to let go of all the cares of the week, to allow our bodies and souls to relax, to welcome in the peace and the joy and the holiness and the light of true rest. Sabbath. To welcome in the peace and the joy and the holiness and the light of true rest. Resting in the presence of God takes practice. Taking time to step back from all the worries and distractions and noise to reconnect with the God within and among us. To appreciating the beauty and wonder of the created world and the beauty and wonder of the people in our lives. Now, I mentioned artificial intelligence at the beginning of my thought here. And last week, I discovered that there is an artificial intelligence program that will do a summary of one's sermon. <laughs> so I took the risk. I didn't do it, Sue did it. <laughs> and had this artificial intelligence program develop a summary of my little sermon last week, summary was not bad. 
But then it made suggestions for how to improve it. <laughs> and I'm still not quite sure how I feel about some artificial intelligence, which I really don't understand, having an opinion about what I had to say last week. But be that as it may, what it suggested was, was something more practical. <laughs> Give them a practical suggestion for the week, this little summary said. And so I've been thinking about that. How could I make my sermon a little more practical? So I'm getting very practical this week. I'm making a practical suggestion, artificial intelligence. There you go. And it is to disconnect, to unplug, to regularly live a day free of screens. Don't look at your phone. Don't watch the news with its constant stories about weather disasters and political division and crime. Turn it off. Spend that time looking around and within instead. Reflect. Give thanks. Appreciate beauty. Dream. Pray. Pause and let God, let love seep into your heart, mind, and soul. This is the Sabbath that God desires for us. When we can say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, and really mean it. Let us pray. God of the Sabbath, lead us, body and soul, into your dwelling place. May we keep the Sabbath as a place of peace and reconciliation in the sacred place within our heart and as a time of healing and restoration in the sacred time we set aside to rest in you and to rediscover your love in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.